dear students good morning the topic for today is of paramount importance and it shall cut across various subjects including pathology such as microbiology pharmacology medicine surgery orthopedics and even pediatrics so it is so very important that it is generally said that if you do not know this topic you do not know medicine kindly be attentive fine welcome to this class a case history a 4 year old child was observed by his mother to manifest weight loss and mild fever one year later the child was brought to the pediatrician as he presented with cough and dyspnea in addition to the above symptoms and the x ray revealed this what is your diagnosis discuss the sequence and events of this disease what are the manifestations in other organs i hope you people will be able to narrow down the diagnosis or even come to the exact diagnosis the lesion here is in circle good the diagnosis is tuberculosis it can come as an essay a short essay a short note or an mcq and even viva and practicals no aspect has been exempted from this topic the causative organism is mycobacterium tuberculosis and the strains are <coughs> sorry hominis and bovis hominis is a strain that affects man and bovis the cattle this has been almost abolished with the pasteurization of milk pasteurization is a process by which it is heated to a very high temperature and cooled abruptly so that the organism is not able to withstand the extremes of temperature so hominis is more common nowadays and the mode of infection is a droplet infection as one speaks he can spray the organism there are other modes also for example a prolonged physical contact as by a surgeon or a pathologist can lead to the infection but that is all extremely rare and droplet infection is the main source it is a rod shaped mildly curvilinear organism which has got a beaded appearance it is acid fast and alcohol fast and a stain called the zeal nielsen stain which is a modification of acid fast stain will display the bacteria we are finding the organisms over here which are pink and thin on the other side i am having an electron microscopic picture which is again showing rod shaped organisms which are not straight you look at this it is slightly curved that is why we use the word curvy linear and when you see the external surface it is not uniform it has got a beaded appearance so this will be the general morphology if you can remember this it's fine and for the virulence of the organism this is important there is a factor called the d factor which prevents the fusion of the lysosome with the phagolysosome we will be seeing that later on so the d factor is responsible for the virulence of the organism and then there is another factor called the cot factor c o r d which 
helps the organism to grow in cots these things will be having in mind as we progress on to the next slide this particular slide is of great importance i would like you people to kindly see this md is not the md that i have got it is a must draw you must draw this diagram so you find that it is a cell a macrophage and then when there is a contact of the organism with the surface there is a dipping in and these are the pseudopods and it goes inside it is called the phagosome so here you find that there is a phagocytic vacuole that has the organism but the paradox is the phagosome does not fuse with the lysosome to form the phagolysosome as a result of which the contents are not emptied the organism is not destroyed we call it a symbiotic kind of relationship you do not harm me and i will not harm you and in the process the bacteria multiplies so this is one pathogenesis please remember this and also this so here you find as usual the neutrophil is the first line of defense after which you find macrophages are being attracted and the macrophages they undertake the phagocytosis of the organism and there are other cells the cd4 cell or the t helper cell which is activated and after this you find the macrophage is converted into an epithelioid cell an epithelioid cell is nothing but a modified macrophage in this one there is very little phagocytic activity and it is quite harmless these cells get aggregated together you find that all the pale cells in the center are the epithelioid cells and they are surrounded by the lymphocytes this particular structure is called a granuloma a granuloma in a tuberculosis is called a tubercle so you are getting a granuloma in this picture i am not able to see any central area of necrosis so it is called a hard tubercle later on there can be softening and necrosis this is called a soft tubercle or a necrotizing granuloma this you people should remember because it can be asked any number of times in any number of places the epithelioid cell and then you have got the lymphocytes rimmed by fibroblasts central necrosis there is a giant cell which we shall see again so this is the evolution of a granuloma please remember this the topic will be incomplete if i do not delve into this particular one a lesson i had learned from my teacher what are the predisposing factors for tuberculosis malnutrition overcrowding poor socio economic status all go hand in hand with tuberculosis steroid therapy silicosis and diabetes go hand in hand with tuberculosis immunosuppression primary or secondary and tuberculosis go hand in hand exanthematous fevers also can lead to tuberculosis and healthcare workers such as doctors nurses are prone to get this more commonly than others so these are the predisposing conditions you can go through them and recite them and this incidentally is a post world war camp in which many of the soldiers were found to be positive for tuberculosis in fact those days you find that tuberculosis was rampant and many a great personnel was positive for tuberculosis the great nelson mandela or the author sir walter scott all of them had tuberculosis napoleon bonaparte what we are going to concentrate on today's class is the primary tuberculosis primary means first until then the patient is not affected so there is a primary tuberculosis it is a site of first affection in an individual 
who is not otherwise exposed and the initial lesion is called the primary focus the initial lesion is called the primary focus and gons focus is a name given for the primary focus in the lung subsequently there is a primary complex these terms we will be seeing repeatedly and you should have them at your fingertips what are the sites of primary tuberculosis all of us are think that primary tuberculosis it occurs in the lung only but then there are the other organs intestine particularly with bovine tuberculosis skin in pathologists cornea whenever there is a splash of surgical material tonsil oropharynx these are all the other sites of primary tuberculosis but the most common that we should remember will be the lung and the intestine and all the others are also sites for primary tuberculosis now that we have mentioned a primary focus what is a primary complex a primary complex consists of the initial focus of infection draining lymphatics and the regional lymph nodes initial focus of infection draining lymphatics and the regional lymph nodes will you get primary complex only in the lung no so let us see what are all the examples in the lung i have got a gons focus along with the draining lymphatics and the hilar lymph nodes together constitute a primary complex of the lung in the intestine the primary focus of infection an intestinal ulcer along with the draining lymphatics <coughs> sorry the mesenteric lymph nodes will lead to a primary complex in the intestine and a third example can be the tonsil the draining lymphatics of the waldeyer's ring and the lymph nodes together you find that all are examples of primary complex but the primary complex in the lung is called a gons complex that's what we are seeing here so look at this picture you can very easily draw this one a line diagram gons focus is a subplural focus it measures hardly about 0.5 to 1 cm in diameter and it is present in the upper part of the lower lobe or the lower part of the upper lobe upper part of the lower lobe or the lower part of the upper lobe to my understanding this is a trachea and this is a bronchus and when something is inhaled it goes and hits the sub pleural region of the lung it cannot go beyond this so it stays there that is how we get the gons focus in the sub pleural region this along with the draining lymphatics this is the lymphatic and the regional lymph nodes or the hilar lymph nodes constitute the gons complex or the primary complex of the lung sub pleural focus draining lymphatics hilar lymph nodes and here i am finding see this is a primary focus and this is a hilar lymph nodes generally the lymphatics are not seen but they are included in the complex and this is a picture from the web path the gross pathology this is a specimen of the lung and look at it in the sub pleural region there are some yellowish nodules this is a primary focus of the gons focus it has been drained and the hilar node is also showing positivity yellowish white in color and this is a higher magnification of the same a primary focus or a gons focus hilar lymph nodes and the lymphatics together constitute the primary complex or the gons complex so this is a line diagram i would like you to draw this one the other things i will not repeat so there is a primary focus the lymphatics and the enlarged and the involved 
ILR group of lymph nodes. You must draw this diagram very easy from illustrated pathology. Regarding primary tuberculosis, I should remember the three P's. Primary focus is one, we have seen. Primary complex is one, we have seen. And progressive primary tuberculosis. Generally what happens is the primary focus in 95% of the cases it becomes inactivated. It undergoes calcification. But in some patients what will happen is it can undergo a reactivation and it can cause a mode of spread etc. And this will finally lead on to a secondary tuberculosis. So that is called a progressive primary tuberculosis. So what are all the lesions in primary tuberculosis? Primary focus, primary complex, progressive primary tuberculosis. The same thing is explained over here. The inhalation of the bacteria gets lodged in the lung, the GONS focus, and then there is a lymph node, GONS complex. This is what we see microscopically. A line diagram which you can draw. So these large cells, pink or the eosinophilic cytoplasm or the epithelioid cells. Epithelioid cells are modified macrophages. And the smaller cells are lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Sometimes you find the epithelioid cells can join together and form a multinucleated giant cell. The central area, there are no cells. It is an area of caseous necrosis. This will be the appearance of a granuloma and peripherally you find that there will be a rim of fibroblast a basket on pattern of fibroblast can be seen in the periphery so please do remember please draw this and these are the three things when you are asked primary complex primary focus etc you need not fumble and this has to be described it is Say again, one centimeter in diameter, subpleural, it harbors the bacilli. Sometimes it will undergo calcification or fibrosis. Now, see this X-ray, you find that there has been a focus and these are the lymph nodes. All these, they may undergo calcification, but then the radiological evidence is called the RAND case complex. The RAND case complex is a radiological counterpart of the GONS complex. This is the primary complex of the lung. This diagram I will not be repeating again and the components are again given here. Please do remember them. But then basically in tuberculosis there is a cell mediated immunity. The cell mediated immunity controls the spread. But when there is going to be a compromise you find that there will be a progressive primary tuberculosis. Please remember these two things. Cell mediated, imm mediated immunity, when it is compromised, can lead to progressive primary tuberculosis. Not for you to draw, but just to understand. Generally, we see the slides. This is a practical slide for you also. All the small dark cells are the lymphocytes. So there is a rim of lymphocytes. And these cells are all pale. You can compare both. You find the cells are pale and the slightly darker structures are the nuclei. And sometimes the cells can fuse together to form a Langhans giant cell. You find a ring-like arrangement or a horseshoe-like arrangement of the nuclei. So you find that multiple granulomata are here. Sometimes they can join together and almost replace a lymph node. Several people have contributed to the study of tuberculosis and one person is called Rich. So the Rich focus you people had already seen. And here he has studied and he has shown a cavity of the lung. And there's also a tuberculosis, there are multiple lesions. And if it is going to be a pneumonia, what type of pneumonia can we call it? Multiple patchy areas of consolidation. 
So this is a tuberculous bronchopneumonia with a cavity issue. And Robert Hunter was a person who has derived this material. Please remember the great people who have contributed to tuberculosis. And these names you people shall remember because your doctors, tomorrow's teachers, see. Gons focus in the lung. Rankes complex is a radiological counterpart of Gons complex. Asman's focus is secondary tuberculosis with cavitation. Simon's focus is a healed epical lesion. Rich focus, you find that it is found in the brain. And Weigert's focus is a subintimal metastatic focus in the pulmonary vein. When there is going to be a vascular invasion, this can happen. Pulse focus is seen in chronic pulmonary tuberculosis again in the apex of the lung. And Simon's focus, S-I-M-M-O-N-D, is seen in the liver. S-I-M-O-N is seen in the lung. So differentiate. These are the various names you people can see for the sake of interest. Common sense for common matters. As I had mentioned earlier, if you do not know tuberculosis, you do not know medicine. But then if a question is asked, what do I answer? The definition, the immunology, the primary focus, primary complex, granuloma, what are the stains for tubercle bacilli, miliary tuberculosis, and the lab diagnosis. Laboratory diagnosis I shall be dealing with in detail in a later session. But for the time being, you can remember the sputum, the PCR, etc. So it is a common sense which is very, very uncommon. Please write this in the examination and not this. Sometimes students have the inquisitiveness of writing the wrong answers. Please do not get into trouble. Efkaristo. Gratias Tibi.